you guys remember the show I Dream of Jeannie? Well, there was one episode where Jeannie thought that Major Nelson was working so hard and he needed to rest more, so she made every day Sunday. Well, today's Sunday. And I'm still super fucking busy. I don't have any videos planned for this week, and I like to try to plan ahead a little bit and give myself some wiggle room, maybe order some parts. I haven't done any of that. But I was thinking, it's probably safe to assume that roughly 90% of all you guys who have actually subscribed did so because of my truck, the 2000 GMC Sierra. Quick side note, just crossed 3,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. You're awesome. And for whatever reason, that truck's starting to get a little bit of popularity. I get questions almost every day now about it. What cam's in it, what I've done to the exhaust, uh, what lowering kit I have on it, things like that. So I figured I might as well just make a dedicated video going over everything I've done to the truck since I've owned it. And I've owned it for, I think, almost a year exactly now. So it seems like a pretty fitting time to just go over everything I've done to the truck since I bought it. Um, and future plans, things that are still wrong with the truck, because there are a few issues that still need to be addressed moving forward. So let's just jump right into it. What did I pay for the truck? I first saw the truck on Craigslist. It was advertised for $1,800. Uh, I went to see it, test drove it. It drove pretty well. The guy claimed it had a recently rebuilt transmission, and uh, which everybody claims something like that when you're on Craigslist. Uh, but I ended up picking it up for 1200 bucks. Drove it onto the trailer, brought it back home, drove it off the trailer. Two days after I bought it, the transmission went out. I lost third and fourth gear. Now at the time I had that 93 Chevy C1500 that if you guys go way back and look at some of the earlier videos, you'll, I think there's like four or five that have that in it. Don't watch the videos because they're, they're really bad and my beard is just awful. Not that it's any better, but it's just super scraggly and it's even worse back then. It's still filling in. Give me some time. It's getting there. Anyway, I had that truck at the time. My goal with the black truck was I wanted to make it like a little street truck and it it, it looked really good once I got the suspension figured out and uh, got everything pretty much dialed in on that. It looked pretty decent. It sounded good, but it just wasn't fast enough. It had a bone stock 305 in it that was making like 170 horsepower maybe. So my goal with that was either build like a 383 for it or um, maybe LS swap it. But then I found the gold truck, the 2000 GMC Sierra. Is it gold or silver? To me it looks more gold. It's technically it's pewter, which can be silver or gold depending on the light and stuff. But I always call it the gold truck and everybody makes fun of me for that. But what do you guys think? Is it gold or silver or pewter? Neither. It's a shit. It's kind of shit. It's good though, it's good shit. Um, my goal with the black truck was to make it like a street truck. I wanted to do an LS swap or build up a small block for it. And then I found the Sierra, which already had the 5.3 in it, which saved me a bunch of money on having to actually do the swap and the wiring and the motor mounts and stuff. So I ended up selling the black truck, which funded a bunch of stuff on the gold truck. It basically paid for the cost of it. Um, I had to get the transmission rebuilt, which there's a local guy that specializes in uh, that specializes in Chevy transmissions only. So he um, and he's retired, so he'll give you a hell of a deal. Uh, he rebuilt that transmission for either six or seven hundred dollars. I can't remember. It's got at least five thousand really hard miles. I launched that thing almost every time I drive it. So once the transmission was rebuilt, drove it a little bit longer, and then from there, I think right after that is when I ordered the. 4.6 drop for it, which is the lowering kit that I got. It's a 4.6 drop. Uh, you do a flip kit in the rear and C-notch the frame. Uh, I just got like a bolt-in C-notch plate. It's uh, two inch drop springs and two inch drop spindles up front. It's from Air Slam It. I actually found one of their cards that was laying in the truck the other day. I don't know if they still sell the same kit. I'll be completely honest. I just ordered it from the most reputable looking eBay store I could find. So I had to get new wheels and I just got some factory GMC 17s off of Craigslist for a hundred bucks I think. And they're still the ones that are on the truck. I was, I've been debating on getting them powder coated or something. I don't know. I might do something with them. And then I got new tires for it. The fronts are 245 60, 17, and the backs are 275, 60, 17s, which comes out to just 
a hair under 30 inches. It's like 29.95 or something like that. So at that point, I had 1,200 into the truck. The lowering kit itself was a little under 500. It was like 492, something like that. And then I had 100 into the wheels, another 550 or so into the tires. And then after lowering it, I had to get new shocks for the back. The front shocks worked fine, but the back shocks were bottomed out uh, with the flip kit. And there were lowering kits that came with shocks for like an extra 100 or 150 bucks for all four shocks. But the front shocks are working fine, so I kept those. And uh, I wanted adjustable shocks for the back, so I got some Rancho XL 9000s. They're nine-way adjustable, and uh, they're just single adjustment and just adjust the damping. So it's either like soft both ways or hard both ways. It's not like a drag shock where you can uh, soften the the damping and then stiffen the rebound so that the back stays squatted. It's not it's nothing like that. So at that point, I had a good running and driving lowered truck. Uh, everything was working fine, drove it like that for a little bit. Um, and then shortly after that, I had to rebuild the rear end. I ordered that knockoff Eaton-style eBay limited slip, which has actually been doing really great. It seems like if you just do the break-in procedure right, which is just some really tight figure eights in a parking lot somewhere, do that like 10 times, and it's been holding up awesome for me. I think pretty much after that is when I put the cam in it, and the cam... The cam is probably the biggest question that I get what cam's in it. Pay attention. It is a Texas Speed and Performance Stage 3 low lift truck cam. It is a 216, 220 duration at 550, 550 lift. And I got the 112 lobe separation angle. And if you get that kit, it's 432 bucks and it comes with basically LS6 valve springs so that you can get that extra lift without bottoming out your stock springs. You don't have to change the lifters, you don't have to change the push rods unless yours are fucked up. And then after you swap the cam you'll need to get some sort of tune. If you don't want to spend a ton of money you can take out your ECU and send it out to like Texas Speed or Black Bear Performance. There's a few, there's a, there's a bunch of other places you can just send your ECU out and have them tune it. Then after that I put on some electric fans from uh, a 98 to 2002 Camaro or Firebird or F-Body. I think the fans themselves were 120 bucks I think and then I just got the Nelson Performance wiring harness which made it just so simple. It really is as close to plug and play as you can get. Well if I wasn't filming it probably would have been like five to ten minutes to install the harness. And then I just did some long tube headers. I was going to get the Speed Engineering long tubes, but they were all sold out. Sold, sold out, sold out, but they were all sold out. Sold. I can't hear that word the same way now. Sold. And then the most recent thing I've done to it is installed some Pace Setter long tube headers. They are one and three quarter. And um, the truck is straight piped right now. Like where the header comes down, I've got 18 inches of exhaust piping just to keep the O2 sensors happy. Eventually I'm gonna put a full exhaust system on it because right now at cruise that thing shakes the whole inside of the truck. It vibrates and it drones like a motherfucker. So that'll probably be the next thing I get. I'm looking at the speed engineering true duels with the X pipe and the axle dump. It's like 400 bucks I think. And then after that I'm looking at converters. I was torn between the Yank 3000 or uh, I'm leaning towards the Circle D converter. It's a 3000 stall. It's $500 something like that. 550 And then there's just like I said there's some miscellaneous things on the truck that still need to be fixed. My windshield. I'm sure some of you guys that have been watching for a while my windshield is cracked as fuck so I need to replace that. My passenger door the window doesn't go up or down. I think that's just the motor. I'm never over there, so I don't worry about it. Uh, the driver's side works just fine. So, there you guys go. Hope that answered some of the questions you had. If you have any more, leave them in the comments below, or you can message me on Instagram at Snydertron3000. Pretty easy to remember. You're already watching the channel. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated the video, give it a thumbs up anyway, and you can write it off as charity on next year's taxes. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you can click on that handsome devil up there in the corner. And if you guys did enjoy this video and want to watch some more stuff with the truck, you can watch me swap the cam right here. 
You can listen to that beautiful lope, 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 lope. Or if you want to see me spend $800 on a $500 lowering kit, you can click right here and watch me install the 4.6 drop. All right. Have fun. Be safe, guys. I'm going to go get some food.